the wealth of his glory is all about we the church of jesus christ must demonstrate the power of the holy spirit must demonstrate the glory of god must glorify god right by demonstrating the word that we preach by what signs wonders and miracles our hope in christ which is the sure expectation of good will only end in glory and not in disappointments confess the greatness of god in everything and receive his greatness you are complete in christ because you child of god you have accepted jesus as your lord and god is for you and he is with you and he want to bless you and he want to protect you all you need to do is to dwell in his presence and daily proclaim his word by believing in his word having the mindset of christ amen Let us welcome the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, as we come into your presence, O Lord. We surrender our hearts to you, Lord. We surrender the offering of our praises to you. For today, Lord, we want to bless your holy name. We want to minister to your heart, O God. For you are worthy of all praises. You are worthy of all worship and adoration. For your sovereignty is an eternal sovereignty. Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. You are the God of love, the God of grace, and the God of power. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence that is here with us. For you are Emmanuel, God with us. You are Jesus, our Savior, the Lamb that was slain. Jesus, we praise you. You are the image of the invisible God. You are the firstborn of all creation. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for you are living in us, and that is our hope of glory. You are the King of glory. We want to exalt you. Day. We want to lift you up. Lift up your name. Hallelujah. We want to sing out of the depths of our heart. Lord, receive our praises. Jesus, you are the light of the world. Jesus, you are the word that was made flesh. Fill us with your wisdom, for you are our wisdom, O God. You are our righteousness. You are sanctification. You are redemption. Kantorobo sakana miyantorobo shante. Kantorobo sekihea. The light of the world. We honor you. You are the great I am. Jesus, you are alive now and forever. You have conquered the power of sin and death. And in you we have redemption. The forgiveness of our sins to the riches of your grace that you lavish upon us with all wisdom and understanding. Praise you. Holy are you, O God. Let us join our hearts together, church. Let us join our voices. Let us give our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, the greatest praises that we can ever give Him right now as we release the shout of praises and we pray that today the heavens will open up right now and God will release His glory we need His glory we need His presence Psalm 27 verse 4 one thing that I desire let us declare to the Lord right now Speak to Him. Declare these words from our heart. Yes, Lord. One thing that I desire, that is to be in Your presence. To be in the house of the Lord our whole life long. To gaze upon Your beauty and to
to meditate in your temple. Yes. Let us gaze on the beauty of the Lord right now as we allow the Spirit to fill us so that we will worship God right now in spirit and in truth. Sarashoto Robokaya. Come, Holy Spirit. Come with your fire, with your consuming fire right now. Jesus Christ, the light of the world, shine in our hearts, reveal your glory. Jesus Christ, the light of the world, shine in our hearts, shine in our hearts, reveal your glory. Jesus Christ. Yeah, 
Welcome you once again, and I would like to greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to declare the love of God over you right now, the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be upon you. May you be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and especially also what comes out of this power is the wisdom of Christ. We need the wisdom of Christ like never before. The Word of God tells us that wisdom is the principal thing. So let us right now pray especially for the wisdom of God and for the light of Christ to enlighten our hearts today. Amen. So as our hearts are being enlightened, we will now then able to understand the mysteries of God. So are you ready? for the second chapter of Colossians. What a powerful and spirit-filled last two weeks that we had, especially on the Colossians series, the very series that God has revealed 
to both Pastor Susanna and me. What an important uh, season for us right now, especially as uh, all of us are battling through the pandemic. We truly and really need the Word of God to encourage us. What can be a better time than now for God to reveal the mysteries, especially from the book of Colossians? Amen. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, and if you have missed the last two episodes of the Colossians, please check out the link in the description box. So basically, in the last two weeks, uh, Pastor Susanna revealed through the power of the Holy Spirit the mysteries of God, the Word of God in Colossians uh, chapter 1. Amen. What did we learn from the Holy Spirit? What are the revelations that has been given to us in chapter 1? Mainly, in chapter 1, the nature of God is revealed. The, the omnipotent, the omnipresent and omniscient nature of God, especially in Colossians 1 verse 15. Amen. The Word of God reveals the powerful nature of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. Amen. So Jesus Christ is the Word that was made flesh, revealed to us. He descended from heaven to earth. He became man and He stripped Himself of the equality with God. The Word of God tells us that Christ, Amen, did not cling to His equality with God as something to be exploited. But He humbled Himself and He was obedient to the will of the Father. Amen. He took up all of our sins upon the cross and in Him we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins to the riches of His grace. Amen. And in Colossians chapter 1 also we understand that Christ is the all-supreme, all-sufficient and all-powerful ever-living God who existed before all things. Amen. Jesus Christ is the beginning and the end the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. So, whatever the understanding of, of uh, science today that speaks about the Darwin theory, the Big Bang, it's not strong enough in its truth. Amen? Because for every action, there is a reaction. Amen? So, there, there, in every cre created things in this world, there must be a source. So the source of every created thing is indeed God Himself. And we need this revelation today. We need this revelation that Jesus Christ existed together with the Father and the Holy Spirit. And in Jesus, all things hold together. Jesus Christ is the sustainer of all things. Amen. So that is the reason why it's so important, especially during this time when everything is breaking loose. Amen. There is so much of chaos surrounding the world today and many people are falling sick. Many people are falling into depression and it is so important for us to understand that if we believe in Jesus and if Jesus is the head of our life, of our family, of our ministry, of everything concerning our lives, Jesus will hold all things together. What a powerful truth. For us to understand amen so because jesus hold all things together amen jesus now has the ability to redeem and reconcile us back to the father to the power of his blood amen so at the finished work of jesus on the cross through the blood that jesus shed for us on the cross now jesus has removed every sin Amen. Every sin and the sin is the, is the gap that actually prevents us from having that access into the presence of God. So now we have the privilege, amen. Indeed, it's a privilege for us that we are able to access the presence of God 24 by 7. Amen. All we need is to believe in the power of His blood. All we need is to seal our, ourselves with the blood of Jesus, our lives with the blood of Jesus, amen, our conscience with the blood of Jesus, 
and through the blood of Jesus, we are holy and blameless and guiltless. Amen. And therefore, we can now boldly declare, therefore, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. So, basically, the gospel of good news is the gospel of salvation. Amen. Jesus Christ is our Savior. The name of Jesus Himself speaks about Jesus has the ability to save us and He is our Savior, the Savior of the world. Amen. So the essence of the Gospel is Jesus Himself. Amen. That Paul described as the image of the invisible God, the all supreme and all sufficient and all powerful ever living God who existed and is before all things. Amen. So now I would like to continue into chapter 2. So let us declare together right now. Amen. It's important for us to have one mind and one heart and declare in the unity of the Spirit. Let us declare together right now, Christ in us, the hope of glory. I want to continue from chapter 1, especially from this verse, Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, that Paul mentioned, this is indeed a great mystery. And what this mystery is all about, it is about Christ living in us, the hope of glory. So as I was preparing for uh, this message today, the one word that stood out very clearly, and perhaps the Holy Spirit wants me to reveal to the church, is this word, the word mystery. Amen. So why this is a mystery? Why Colossians 1 verse 27 that speaks about Christ in us, the hope of glory, is a mystery. Why is a mystery? It's because for those who believe in religion and philosophy, they will not be able to comprehend that God can dwell inside of us. You ask anyone who believes in religion, right? They will tell you that we need to do good works in order to attain the holiness of God. But here, Jesus, as I mentioned earlier, descended from heaven to earth. He became man. Jesus, who knew no sin, He was a perfect man. He knew no sin. He became sin for us. He took away all of our sins, all of our punishment, all of our curses, all of our sickness. He laid it upon Himself and He did it willingly for us. He surrendered Himself to the will of the Father. For it is important for someone who is perfect to die for us sinners. Amen. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. So Jesus took away all of our sins so that now we may be able to attain the holiness of God. Amen perfect and righteous because Jesus is righteous. Amen. He who knew no sin, He became sin for us so that in Him we now become the righteousness of God. So with this righteousness of God, Amen, being cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, holy and blameless, now we have access into the presence of God. Not only that, now Christ and God and the, God, God the Father and the Holy Spirit, now they are able to dwell inside of us. And this itself is a great mystery. Christ in us, the hope of glory. So Jesus' name is also known as Emmanuel. Right in Isaiah 7, a son will be born to a virgin and he shall be called Emmanuel. So what is the meaning of Emmanuel? Emmanuel means God with us. So it is synonymous to Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, that speaks about Christ's desire to live inside of us. Amen. Because it's the nature of God through His Son, Jesus, that God wants to dwell inside of us and He wants to walk with us. He wants to live with us. He wants to lead us. Amen. So this is also a powerful mystery. Emmanuel, God with us that needs to be revealed to everyone 
who believe in the name of Jesus. Amen. Especially as we are going through storm at this moment. Amen. So if you notice in all the narratives in the gospel, right? Especially when the disciples were going through the storm, Jesus was there in the boat. And because Jesus was there in the boat, amen, Jesus commanded the storm to be still and the storm immediately became still. So in every storm that we face in our life, it is crucial for us to understand this mystery. Let this mystery be forever, amen, in our hearts. That is Christ in us, the hope of glory. And the hope speaks about the anchor of our soul, amen. Let the hope of God, not the hope of the world, be the anchor in our soul. That we will always remember that this hope is full of glory, amen. The Word of God in Romans 8 tells us, the present suffering, our present suffering cannot be compared with the glory that is about to be revealed in our lives. So always remember, in all the storms and hardship and trials of your life, Christ, Jesus, the Emmanuel, God with us, is always with you. Always declare this, yes Lord, thank you Lord, for in every storm that I'm going through right now, Jesus, Emmanuel, is with me. Amen. So long as you are conscious of the presence of God, that is Emmanuel, God with us, God will always bring you through every storm in your life. So once again, in Colossians chapter 2, verse 2, let us go into verse 2 right now. Apostle Paul mentioned the word mystery again, that refers now to the Father and Christ Himself. Verse 2, that your hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, and attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God here the word mystery is being mentioned again not only in Colossians chapter 1 but also in Colossians chapter 2 verse 2 the powerful word mystery is being right so this mystery of God is to be revealed only listen to this carefully mystery of God can only be revealed by the Holy Spirit alone Amen. Because the Holy Spirit has been sent to help us, to walk alongside us, to teach us and to guide us into all truth. So let the Holy Spirit become our divine teacher right now to bring about a revelation and enlightenment in our heart that in our heart there is a great conviction, amen, about this mystery. Not only Christ in us, being the hope of our glo of the glory of God, amen. But also, let the mystery of God reveal the heart of the Father and the nature of Jesus Himself. So basically, if we are able to understand the mysteries of God through the Holy Spirit, and if we respond and believe by faith, not only that, we live out the faith that God has given us, amen. We respond by believing and live it out. We will not only survive, but we will thrive through every crisis in our life. Amen. We will excel above and beyond every storm, every crisis, every hardship, every suffering. And when we come out of the crisis, we will be stronger than ever. Amen. We will have, we will have greater confidence and greater faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 3, the Word of God tells us in Colossians chapter 2, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So the mystery of God is the wisdom and knowledge, right? So let us go back to verse 2 and let us connect to verse 3 right now, right? Verse 2 speaks about that our hearts may be encouraged knitted together in love. What love is this? This is the love of God. Amen. Christianity is a relationship with the God of love. Amen. It is God who first loved us. Amen. That now we are able to love God and love our neighbor. 
So our lives need to be rooted in the love of God. Amen. And through the love of God, now we have understanding, right? As what the Word of God says, attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding. So what is the meaning of understanding? Another word for understanding is revelation. Amen. Revelation to the knowledge of the mystery of God. There you go. Both of the Father and of Christ. So, to summarize this verse 2, what the Holy Spirit wants us to understand is this, that our lives need to be rooted in the love of God. And the more we are rooted in the Word of God, now we have the revelation of the mystery of God. And when we have the revelation of the mystery of God, it will produce in our life knowledge. So, what type of knowledge is this? This is not intellectual knowledge, amen? But this is experiential knowledge, amen? So what can experiential knowledge do to our lives? When we have experiential knowledge, we have encounters with God, amen? And we will produce in our lives the miracles of God, amen? Every signs and wonders will be revealed to us by our Heavenly Father. And these events are all known as mysteries. So if you look up the dictionary today, what is the meaning of mystery? Mystery is something that no natural understanding will ever provide you with a reason. Amen? There is no reason in the natural that is, that is able to describe an event that is a miraculous event. Amen? All we can do is that there is a greater person that is behind these works of miracle. So once again, the most important thing is to be rooted in the love of God. And through the love of God, we have revelation of the mystery. And the mystery will now produce an encounter with God. That is experiential knowledge. And the encounter with God will give us many beautiful testimonies. We have many testimonies all to the glory of God. Amen. There were people who are afflicted by COVID. Amen. And through prayers and impartation, of the power of the Holy Spirit, they were all set free. This is one of the many uh, beautiful testimonies that, and, and I, I would like to testify all this to the glory of God. All right? Thank you, Jesus. So why is the revelation of the mystery of the Father and the Son so important to us as believers? There must be a reason. And if you look at Colossians chapter 2, the reason is this, so that we will not fall into the deceptive plan of the enemy through persuasive arguments all right so this is the plan of the enemy in the end time that is to divide the church one of the plan of the enemy is to divide the church through arguments amen in verse 4 and also verse 8 in verse 8 apostle paul repeats again right that this is the main reason why the believers of Christ needs to have the revelation of the mystery of the Father and the Son. Right? Let's uh, read verse 4 and verse 8 right now. Verse 4. Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. Once again, he repeated again, Apostle Paul repeated it again in verse 8. Beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the word tradition of men according to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. All right. So in verse 1 of chapter 2, you will notice that uh, Paul mentioned that this message is also for Laodicea. So basically Laodicea is situated around 11 miles from the church of the Colossians. All right. So basically if you look at Revelation uh, chapter 2 and 3, Apostle uh, John had the revelation in a vision. The seven churches that was revealed from God through the angel. And one of the church that also speaks about the condition of the church today is the message to the church of Laodicea. So in a nutshell, the message concerning the church of Laodicea is that there were many lukewarm believers. So I believe that the message, the central message also in the book of Colossians is also to address 
the lukewarm faith of the believers. So, what is a lukewarm faith? A lukewarm faith is basically a faith or a belief system that has been mixed with the basic principles of the world. We have mixed our belief. We believe in Christ, but at the same time, we also believe in the traditions of man. We believe in Christ, but at the same time, we believe in all the philosophies of the world, the basic principles of the world. There is a great mixture today in the Church of Jesus Christ. And today, after having that revelation from the message in Colossians chapter 1 and 2, let us make a decision today that we will only depend on the wisdom of Christ. Amen. We will only have faith only towards Jesus Christ in His Word. Because Jesus Christ is the Word that was made flesh. So now, you have understood this mystery through the revelation of the Spirit. All right? You have understood now the mystery that is Christ in us, the hope of glory. You have understood now the mystery concerning the Father and the Son. Amen? So, we need to constantly be rooted in the love of God. All right? In order for God's power to manifest in our life. All right? So now you have understood this mystery. So what is next? Verse 6 will tell us the secret to successful Christian living. All right? So verse 6, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so now walk in Him. I want you to repeat with me. Walk in Him. Verse 7, Rooted and built up in Him. Right? Repeat after me. Build up in Him. And establish in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. So notice the two important walk in our life, all right, with Jesus, that is walk in, in Jesus, and also rooted and built up in Him. Notice the word in Him is being mentioned again and again. Why? Because the Holy Spirit wants to reveal to us this mystery, Christ in us. Amen. So as we abide in Christ, as His words remain in our hearts, Amen. The Word of God tells us that ask anything and it shall be given to you. So basically, walk in Him. Walk speaks about what? It speaks about our lifestyle and our relationship with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So Christianity is a lifestyle, is a relationship with God, is a walk with Jesus 24 by 7. When you are sleeping, Jesus is right there with you, together with you, in you. Amen? So, let us walk with Jesus. Constantly walk with Jesus. Amen? Galatians 5 uh, verse 16 tells us, Walk in the Spirit and you shall not gratify the desires of the flesh. So basically, there is a war between the flesh and the Spirit. So in order for you to win the war against your flesh, in your flesh, it's, the, it's our sinful nature. It's all of our weaknesses. Amen? So, one way that the enemy wants to bring us down is through the works of the flesh. So how can we have victory over the works of the flesh is to strengthen our spirit. So one way that we can walk in the spirit at all times is by praying in the spirit. Pray in tongues at all times. Always conscious about the presence of God in our life. So that's how we walk in the spirit. Meditate upon His word. Amen. Every word that you, that you have read on a daily basis, every day, there is a fresh manna from heaven. So receive that word, get it rooted in your heart, meditate on it, and you will be successful. All right? So the next important uh, point here is that you be rooted and build up in Him. All right? So we need to build up in Him. We need to build our life, our family, our ministry, our career, our finances and health. Everything has to be built upon this rock that is Jesus Himself because Jesus is our sure foundation and Jesus is our cornerstone. All right? So everything has to be revolved around Jesus. Jesus has to take the center place in our lives. In, in fact, in every area of our life. Once again, in our family, so I want to declare upon you right now that Jesus will be the cornerstone of your family right now. 
Jesus will be the cornerstone of your ministry right now. Jesus will be the cornerstone of your career right now. And Jesus will be the cornerstone in your finances and in your health. If Jesus is the cornerstone in every area of your life, you can be rest assured that there is no legal access that the enemy can use to enter into that particular area in your life. Right? So Matthew chapter 7 speaks about the house that builds on the rock will never be shaken. Right? So I would like to expand further on build up in Him to give us the revelation of what is it exactly to build up in Him, to build our lives in Him. So let us look into Matthew chapter 7 right now from verse 24. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine, it's important for us to open up our spiritual ears right now to hear the words of Jesus, which is, in other words, the Word of God. Whoever hears the Word of God and does them. So it's not enough to just hear the Word of God, but we need to act on the Word. If you believe that God truly supply you of all things in your life. If you truly believe in the Word of God in Philippians 4 verse 19 that speaks about my God shall supply all of your needs. Amen. In times of difficulty in your finances, what you need to do? You need to boldly speak out the Word of God. Speak out this word over your situation right now. Speak out this word over your financial lack right now. So I want to declare right now over you that should there be any financial lack in your life right now I declare the promises of Philippians 4 verse 19 and I want you to believe in your heart right now if you are going through financial lack especially during this time of pandemic you are going through this financial lack right now I want you to believe that God has never left you nor forsake you amen that he is your good shepherd and he will prepare green pastures he will prepare a table of banquet in the presence of your enemies and i want to declare over you right now that my god the god of abraham isaac and jacob shall supply all of your needs according to the glorious riches of his son jesus christ amen is going to you're going to be you're going to ha have the full glorious riches of our Lord Jesus Christ in your finances. Receive it right now in Jesus' name. So once again, we go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, that means act on the word of God, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Jesus is our rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house. So all this speaks about a crisis, hardship, trials, amen, persecution. What we are going through today is something like this. The rain descended and from the rain, the floods came, the winds blew one after another. We are being hit not only by the coronavirus, but also but by all kinds of sicknesses, all kinds of calamities, the natural disasters if you look around the world today. So it's one crisis after another. Amen. This is definitely the works of the enemy. But for those who believe in the word, for those who hear the saying of Jesus Christ, who hear the word of God and act on it, they are like the house that is built on the rock. So what happens to the house that is built on the rock? Amen. The word of God tells us in verse 25, even though there were crises, even though the winds came, amen, the floods came, beat on that house, the secret here is that it did not fall. The secret here is to have our lives built in Jesus, the word that was made flesh, built upon the rock, and you will not fall. Thank you, Jesus. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them, verse 26, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Verse 27, And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, beat on that house, and it fell. And great was its fall. So today, there are many people who have taken their life away because they do not know where to turn to. 
And we as believers in Christ, we know the greatest secret of it all is to believe in the Word, to act on the Word, and God will ensure, amen, that our faith in Him will be rewarded. Amen? The Word of God tells us in Hebrews 11 that God is a rewarder of those who seek Him diligently. So let us all seek the Lord diligently, amen, Without any doubt, let us believe in Jesus, Amen, who is our foundation. So let us build our lives in Him. As what the message of Colossians 2 today speaks about, walk in Him, Amen, because He is Christ living in us, the hope of glory, and have our lives built in Him, built upon Him. So basically, relationship with Jesus is the only way that will give us access to the truth that will lead us to the life of salvation. John 14 verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So I pray right now that your life will align to the ways of God. Find that way, make a straight path for the Lord today. Amen. Prepare your life. Open your heart and allow God's ways to be your ways. Allow His thoughts to be your thoughts. Amen. If you do that, Amen, God will reveal the truth to you. The truth of what? The truth of the mysteries of God. Because today's secret word is mystery. We need to understand in a deeper way each day the mystery of God. And what is the mystery of God? Is to understand what is in the heart of the Father and to understand the true nature of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when we have true revelation of the mystery of walking in Him and building in Him, we will not fall. Listen to this. We will not fall to deception, to religious tradition, to philosophy and the things of this world. Because you know where your hidden treasure is. Amen? The hidden treasure that contains wisdom and knowledge. And remember, it's not intellectual knowledge, but it is an experiential knowledge of God the Father and the Son. Where your treasure is, that is where your heart will be also. I hope you have been blessed with the Word of God today from the first part of Colossians chapter 2. So let us now seal every word that we have received today by remembering all the blessings that God has for us in the Holy Communion. Now is the time for God to minister to us. This is indeed the prophetic timing of the Holy Spirit. So let us raise up our expectation to God right now. For the Bible tells us that this is the mystery, Christ in us, the hope of glory. So raise up your hope right now. It's not the worldly hope, it's the biblical hope, it's the godly hope, it's the blessed hope. Amen. It's the assurance of good things to come. Amen. The confident expectation of good. That's the hope that we are having right now. And the hope of glory that is Christ living in us will only produce good fruits, will only produce glory. Amen. For our present sufferings cannot be compared with the glory that is about to be revealed in our life. So right now, raise up your confidence expectation of good right now. For our God is good. Amen. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. So let us pray right now. Let us pray right now. I want you to close your eyes and as a sign of surrendering, open the palm of your hands right now. Open your hearts for God wants to fill your heart with His love right now. The Holy Spirit is present here. The consuming fire of the Holy Spirit is right there where you are. Sharabo Sokorobo, Holy Spirit fire. Feel your people right now from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Feel them right now. Consume them right now, O oh God. 
Sotorobo Shantaraba. So let us grab hold of the revelation of the Word of God from Colossians chapter 2, verse 2. That your hearts may be comforted. May your hearts be comforted right now. Being knit together in love. Yes, God is filling your hearts right now with His love. It's not an ordinary love. It's the love of God. It's the unconditional and eternal love of God that is filling you right now. And the love of God has the ability and power to release miracles, signs and wonders in your life. Hallelujah. As you are being filled with the love of God right now, according to Colossians chapter 2, verse 2, the love of God will cause you to receive all the riches and assurance of full understanding. And this full understanding is the revelation of the Holy Spirit that you will understand the knowledge of the mystery of God right now. Amen. This knowledge is not an intellectual knowledge. This knowledge is an experiential knowledge. An experiential knowledge is the mystery because it will give you a powerful encounter with the living God. Amen. You will encounter the works of miracles, signs and wonders that can only be demonstrated through the hands of the Father, through the power of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Touch your people right now. Transform their hearts right now. I see God is removing right now every root of fear in your heart. Rabo Shanta Rabo Soko. There are many of you, you are fearful of the pandemic right now. So God is releasing the power in your heart, in your life, that you have the boldness and the authority to say to the spirit of fear, get out of my life right now. So I rebuke the spirit of fear out of the life of your people right now and set them free, O oh God. Set them free, Holy Spirit, right now from every spirit of fear, from every spirit of anxiety, from every spirit of depression. God is setting some of you right now from depression. You are taking medication to, to, to ease your depression. But right now, God is giving you the power to, to let go, to surrender right now to Him, this area. And you will live a free and powerful life right now Hallelujah. Shorobo Soko. You are free from every depression right now. Kantarabiyo Soko no Santa. I sense right now an anointing of healing that is just flowing in the atmosphere. Thank you, Jesus. Let us believe in the great things that God is doing right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Feel your people right now with a greater measure of your faith right now that they will believe for everything that you are doing in their lives right now. Raise up their expectation, O God. Robo shonto robo saka. God is healing those of you who are suffering from cancer. Holy Spirit, fire, flow right now. Harobo shoko robo seke. I declare the promises of the Word of God from Romans 8 right now. Rabba kata. And this is the reality. The reality is this. The mystery of Christ in you, living inside of you, the hope of glory. And the Holy Spirit, that is the Spirit of Jesus that is living inside of you, is the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Romans 8 speaks about the Spirit of the Father that raised Christ from the dead is the same Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that is living inside of you, that is abiding in you right now. And I activate the Holy Spirit inside of you that it will give life to your mortal bodies. Romans 8 speaks about the Holy Spirit that will give life to our mortal bodies. Let the life of Christ, let the life of the Spirit flow right now from within you. As the life of the Spirit is flowing right now, it will give life to your mortal bodies, which means you will receive healing right now. You will receive healing right now. I want you to touch the, your, your belly right now That's the area of your spiritual heart And I declare upon Every spiritual heart right now That are watching That out of your belly Out of your spiritual heart Shall flow right now Rivers of living waters Hallelujah Rivers of living waters Of freedom Of peace Joy Hope The grace of God Is just flowing right now The grace of God That will set you free 
from every sicknesses. Hallelujah. The grace of God that will set you free from the bondage of cancer right now. God is healing someone of blood disease. God is healing right now motor neuron disease. God is healing right now. There is the, the, the pain at your back that runs from your shoulder, right shoulder. You have pain at your right shoulder right now. Robo Shataraba. And it goes through your back right now. Your lower back is being healed right now. You can feel a sensation right now. Yes, the Holy Spirit is very much present. Karabo Sokonomo Yaraba Shata Raba Kata Rokonomo Basata. I see God is healing one lady right now. You are watching Sharabo Soko. You have hormonal issues. God is healing you right now. Korabia Soto no Moshanta. I see God is healing people with heart problems. Rabo Shobra Kato no Moskotorobo Shante. Rabakaya Mosotorobo Shanta. God is healing people with gastritis right now. Rako no Moskoho. Rabiato. Knee problem. You are having problem with your knees. Rabo Shata Raba Sikaya Monto. Yakaramoso. I want you to move your leg right now. Rabo So and receive that healing of God. Rabo Karabo So Kodomo Shanto. Labo Rebi Kaya Mosca. Nothing is possible to God. He's moving freely right now in this place. Rabba Shakana Moskohota. Two people. You are suffering from migraine. God is healing you right now. Receive that healing. Korobo Sokonomo Rakata. Yabrakian Torobo. Santa Rebihe. God is healing someone with a left ear problem. I want you to touch your left ear right now. Right now, touch your left ear and let the healing power of God just flow right now. Flow. Flow in and through the ears right now. Release. Rua. Breath of God. Be released right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Satorobo Shante. Rakono Montorobo Shataraba Kaya. Yakontorobo. God is healing people with C3 and C4 problem right now. Rabo Shokonomo Soko. Some of your bones are being strengthened. Straightened right now through the power of God. Hallelujah. Santo Robo Shikaraba Kiato. Brakanto Robo Shikaraba Sika. You have tennis elbow problem. God is healing you right now. Ho Rabasaka. One person, you're, you're watching us right now. You have uh, tennis elbow problem. Rabo Shok. God is healing you right now. I'm hearing tennis elbow problem. Be set free once and for all in the mighty name of Jesus. Insomnia is being healed right now. Rakoto Robo Shata Rabo Soko. Brakanta Rabo Shikaraba Sika. Dementia is being healed right now. Hallelujah. Brasoko Nomo Shoko Riba Kaya Monto. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sato Robo Shikaraba Santa. Yes, I'm hearing again nerve problem. God is healing your nerve problem right now. Labrasoko Nemianta Rashiko Robo Kaya. Yaskotorobo Shaka Indigestion problem You are having this indigestion problem regularly God is healing you right now Your Sotorobo Thank you Jesus Touch the area of your stomach And receive that healing In the mighty name of Jesus Korobo Shakonomo Skotorobo Kaya Manta Hallelujah Thank you Lord Thank you Jesus Thank you Hallelujah Shotorobo Soko Rokonomo Skaha Some of you, you are praying for the return of your family member Shoko God is restoring relationship right now there's one mother you're so worried of your son Robo Show because of the pandemic God is giving you the assurance right now have confidence in me and I will take care of you your son and your family there are people who are watching you have COVID-19, you have been set free from the spirit of COVID-19, from this disease, but you have fear that your, your body condition, your lungs is not the same again. But today, I declare upon you restoration of your heart, restoration of your lungs, restoration of your body system, res restoration of your immune system right now. Your immune system is functioning greater than before because it comes with the restoration of God. When God restores something, it is greater than previously. That's the power of God. Receive right now as the power of God is being released upon your life. Thank you, Jesus.
Do not fear, do not be discouraged. I am with you, my child. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shorobo soko no montorobo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let us now seal every blessings and miracles that we have received just now through the Holy Communion. The Holy Communion is the time for us to remember everything that Jesus has done for us on the cross. That Jesus paid for all of our sins in full. He removed all of our sins through His blood and through His broken body, we are all made healed and completely whole. Jesus Himself gave thanks to the Father, took bread, broke it and said this, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. So we remember Jesus' body that was broken for us so that our bodies will be healed. As we continue to seal every healing right now, as we give thanks to the Lord for this healing that we have received by Jesus stripes, we can boldly declare right now, we were healed from all diseases. Amen. So do this in remembrance of Jesus. Let us give thanks as we remember every blessings that God has obtained for us through the cross. Thank you, Jesus. In the same manner, Jesus took the cup after he had supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your broken body and for your blood that was shed for us on the cross. I sprinkle your blood, Lord Jesus, over our families, over our finances, and over every plans and our movement coming in and going out, Lord. And we continue to trust in the power of your blood, that your blood will indeed protect us and deliver us from every fear, from every harm, from every danger, from every witchcraft of the enemy and every plans of the enemy against us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for every protection that you have granted us through this pandemic, Lord. We believe, Lord, that we are completely set free today from every fear and we can now walk boldly knowing that you are working in us, through us and with us. Thank you, Jesus, once again. By faith in Christ, we partake. Amen. What a glorious day it had been. And before we end our service today, let us pray for the Father's blessings upon our life. May God, the Father of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, bless you and keep you all the days of your life. And may the Lord make His face to shine upon you. And may the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you His peace. In Jesus' name we pray. See you again. God bless.